Welcome to another Alice tutorial. In this tutorial I want to demonstrate how we can add collision detection into our programs. So let's consider this simple program we've got here. We've got a Humvee and we've got a number of buildings and I've added, already added some event handling methods for allowing us to drive the Humvee around. So let's have a look at what we can do so far. So using the arrow keys I can move the Humvee forward, left and right and also backwards. But you'll notice at this stage I can also drive the Humvee straight into buildings, which is certainly not what we, what we desire. So let's stop that, and let's have a look at how we might add some collision detection into our programs. So, we go into our world object, we're going to create a new method. And we're going to call it collision. And within this method, what we're going to do is check whether or not the Humvee is within a certain distance of, of the centre of one of these buildings. So we're going to use an if statement to do that. Initially we use true there. And we'll go over to a Humvee. Look at hum functions here. And we're going to use the Humvee is within threshold function. So that's going to return a true or false value, which is perfect for an if statement. And let's start off with a default of 10 metres within the factory. And if that happens, what we want to do is get our Humvee to drive backwards or move backwards 10 metres. Oh, sorry, 1 metre. Should do it. So move backwards 1 metre and we'll just change the duration so it's 0 0.01. And that's good. Alright, let's just save that. And now, at the moment as it stands, we've got this particular method on its own. So what we're going to do is we're going to use event handling to call this continually in the background. So we're going to create a new method or new event. We'll use the default when the world starts. But what I do, want to do is change that to get this to run continually. So while the world is running. While the world is running, during that time I want to call the collision method. So that's continually running in the background and checking whether or not the Humvee is within 10 metres of the factory. So let's run that and see what it does. So this time I'm going to drive the Humvee forward up to the building and you can see we're getting some sort of reaction going on here. But I haven't quite got the threshold right. So let's change that to well, let's say 15 metres. And rerun that. We go up to the factory and you can see we it was pretty good. So it's certainly stopping before it's going straight into the building, but we've still got a bit of an issue. Part of the Humvee is going into the building, not really what we desire. So rather than just continual with guesswork here, what we're going to do is use some functions. So let's think about it. We want to measure the distance. We want to ensure the distance between the centre of the building and the centre of the Humvee, or that that the threshold is greater than the distance between the centre of the building and the centre of the Humvee. So how are we going to do that? Well we're going to use some functions here. So we go over to our factory first and look at the function. We're going to use the factory's width. But we divide that by two because again we're working from the, the centre of the building. So the factory's width divided by two. But we also want to add to that the half of the the depth of the Humvee. So we go to a Humvee and we use depth here. Well, actually we need to do add first. So add to that, we'll just put in default value of 1 for now. We'll go Humvee's depth, drag replace the 1 with that and again divide that by 2. Oops. Undo. Let's divide that by 2. Okay, perfect. So let's see what happens when we run this. So again we'll drive towards the the building. And you see we're getting a pretty good result out of that. Now it's not ideal. You can see if we hit corners and so forth we get slight movement into the building. But a pretty good result. So we'll leave it for there uh, there for now. But what I want to do is look at how we can apply this function 
or this code here so that it works for all of the objects. Now what I could do of course is to extend this with perhaps an OR statement, so a logical OR, and put in additional checks for all of the other buildings. But that's going to end up with very long-winded, very ugly code that's going to be hard to read and so forth. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use a list. So I want to create a list that represents all of the things I want to avoid colliding into. So I'm going to call it buildings. It's a list of objects and I'll go through and add new objects. So first object will be the factory, the second object will be the windmill, which we want the entire windmill, the third will be the gazebo and finally we've got the townhouse. Okay, so I've got a list of these these buildings now. So what I can do is I can do use the for all together to check for collisions against all of these particular objects. So for all together buildings, drag this code into here and rather than just calling it having where I've got subject equals factory, now I can replace that by subject equals item from buildings which will in effect go through and check in turn all of these buildings. So let's play that and see what, what we get. So we drive towards windmill and excellent you see that we've got collision avoidance occurring there. Same goes for the gazebo. Let's turn it around. Oops, pretty slow process. To the townhouse and again pretty good. Not perfect but that's probably going to do us for now. So let's stop that. Let's just sum up. We've used event handling. We've used the while world is running event to check for collisions. Calling this method and then this method will go through for all of these objects in this list and check whether an event occurs. Alright, I think I might wrap it up there. So hopefully you found the tutorial useful.